For 10 years now, the Macan has been a bestseller. Now the new, all-electric one is here. I've driven the prototype. It drives like a Porsche. York, what goals and challenges were there during development in terms of retaining the identity of this successful model line? When we develop a new model, Porsche always focuses on performance and driving dynamics. That's Porsche. That's our DNA. Exactly that, coupled with efficiency in our design language, was the challenge. And mastering that challenge was our motivation. Could you give us a ballpark estimate of how many pre-production test kilometers the model will have? Well, I can tell you that we've recently done over 3.5 million test kilometers. That's several 24-hour of Le Mans in a row. <laughs> you have to drive a long time to get that far. We're on the road worldwide. We have to cover all temperature ranges, so minus 30 to plus 50 degrees, which we get in Death Valley, for example. We have an SUV, so we want to cover the full spectrum there as well. So we do gravel, snow, sand, to get the whole picture. We're all over the world. It's essential that the car looks like a Porsche. Everyone has to see it. The fly line has to be right, and yet the efficiency has to be there as well. And of course, the drag coefficient is a key factor here. That's a very interesting point. I was in the wind tunnel, and the aerodynamics engineers and designers explained the vehicle and its efficiency to me. Wow, Thomas, what area are we in here in the wind tunnel? This is wild. We are right in the center of the aerodynamics development unit at Porsche. You see the big motor in front of us. I've never been in a wind tunnel and certainly never been so close to this fan. The dimensions are crazy. This is where the wind is accelerating. It's about 70 kilometers an hour here, and it generates 300 kilometers an hour in the measuring section. But not here. No, not here, right here. The speed is significantly lower. I still have loads of questions, so let's move on to the car. And we're now showing those who made this car. Peter, our designer, and Andy, Hi. our aerodynamics engineer. Hi. Hi, what is the teamwork like? What does the designer want? What does the aerodynamics engineer want? And are there any sticking points? The basic design should be classic Porsche, and that sometimes conflicts with the specifications they set out for us. We then have to harmonize things so that it still looks good and also functions well. In any case, we work on every millimeter. Yes, this is true. It was a pretty intense collaboration with the designers, particularly these corners that are so nicely accentuated here. The aerodynamics engineer always wants to take it further, especially when there are shorter overhangs, and when the design wants to stay further in. I think we found a great compromise here in combination with the air curtain channel. It must be said that this is still a prototype and not the finished car, of course. You can already see where it's going. I already feel it's absolutely inspiring. It's still a prototype, but at least you can see the things we're still working on. The things we're still putting the finishing touches to. Can you give me a few specific examples that perfectly show this teamwork? I think it also met your needs when we said that, from an aerodynamics perspective, we'll move the brake cooling from the underbody to the front. But then we could compensate for that with the cooling air flaps and still create a relatively bullish front without a trade-off in terms of aerodynamics. I'm familiar with that from motorsports, where we drive with a closed underbody, like in the LMP back then. And that makes a huge difference. How is that here in the new Macan? The battery floor means we have a completely closed underbody. And in this car, we also achieved securing all the areas connected to it, such as the front and rear axle housings, so they are completely flush. That brings us to the subject of the components that turn, namely the wheels. The wheels, when you look at these vehicles, are more closed. They have less airflow, and we don't need quite as much brake cooling. And this is totally new. The tire sidewalls are optimized. I have to add one thing. 
Designers love big wheels, and the Macan has huge rim sizes. We go up to 22 inches. That's incredibly attractive. This means the vehicle has large sized wheels for this overall length and the wheelbase. I'm personally very happy about that. And they are fully optimized. Yes, we still haven't talked about the rear because there's a lot going on here. We can ultimately say that the roof line from the B pillar and on the rear was actually the enabler in terms of getting these low drag coefficient ranges with a vehicle of this size and in this segment. Can you specify a value? With the Macan, we achieve a top CD value of 0.25. That's a tenth better than the predecessor. Which means a huge step forward. A huge jump that ultimately means 85 more kilometers of range just through the aerodynamics. This vehicle has very high and ambitious targets. And we agreed that we could only get there by revisiting the entire roof line. We have adapted aerodynamic elements to make the vehicle even better in different driving situations. But we integrated them really well. And integration is quite important in the sense that you get a much clearer and cleaner design. Now we can see the technology under this aerodynamic shell. Let's dig into the details. Can you give me some outline data, a few figures? We will have over 450 kilowatts of power in the vehicle, over 1,000 newton meters of torque, and we're well under four seconds from zero to 100. That felt extremely fast, and I have to say, reproducible as well. That's our standard, feeling that thrust not one time, but of course, over and over again. And what we promised in the past, we are promising with the electric cars as well. Can you show us where this dynamism comes from? The key is packaging and weight distribution. One thing is key, of course. The battery in the center with an extremely low center of gravity helps, but when you go back here, you can see how we've moved the drive further back. This enabled us to create the space here for the rear axle steering. We have an adjustable five degree angle. This gives us an outstanding turning circle and great driving dynamics. I don't have to tell you what rear axle steering does for the dynamics, and visually you can also see that we have a very powerful electric motor or a fully variable distribution of the power. To top things off, we have a height adjustable air suspension with a two valve damper, which easily spans the full range between sportiness and comfort. How did you resolve the question of getting the characteristic Porsche dynamics and performance, as well as range? The first thing you need is power. <laughs> to get enough power, you need a very powerful electric motor, but also the right battery. We integrated a 100 kilowatt hour battery in the car, of which we can use 95%. And then you have the element of recuperation. We can recuperate up to 240 kilowatts using the brakes. In other words, you you only rarely need the friction brake. Many will be interested in charging that is as fast as possible, and which ideally functions flawlessly anywhere. Can you give us some numbers there? As wide as possible charging window was important to us. We can charge with 270 kilowatts, and that over a very wide range. But I think it's quite impressive that we can recharge for 100 kilometers in about four minutes. I think those are really impressive values. Do you test how charging works in different countries? That's very important. We have different charging standards, so we go all over the place in our main markets to try them out and to use charging as well, because charging an electric vehicle simply has to work. Can you give us a value for the range? Well, I can assure you that all variants will exceed 500 kilometers.
I have to say, it brakes and steers like a Porsche. Incredibly good feedback via the steering. You can feel the power, the acceleration. But the Macan isn't just supposed to be a sports car. The Macan must be an all-rounder that covers the full range of customer benefits. And it must be recognizable as a Macan. We have achieved the entire spectrum. And the challenge of implementing this was an incentive for all of us.